What's up, Steeler Nation? We are back for another week of the sick podcast, Steeler Crazy. I'm energized. I got some sleep. The wife's in Vegas. The baby's at the uh, at my uh, parents, her grandparents. So uh, I'm just ready to talk some uh, Steelers football. Really excited. You said it's raining in South Florida right now? Yeah, I guess I'm less energized than you. And it's funny that you mentioned that because I, I noticed in our YouTube comments last week, <laughs> And somebody said you looked a little tired. I don't know. If you said well, that I was too. running on like four hours of sleep. So, yeah, I responded and I was like, he's the hardest working guy in, in show business over here. And I think the guy was just taking a jab at you. I don't think he was a, a, a jag or anything like that. But I, I found that to be pretty funny. So glad you mentioned that. But, yeah, we got thunderstorms down here. So if I uh, if I go off of air for a little bit, you know, don't miss me too much, I guess. We won't. But hey, we have a special guest today, someone who's been covering the Steelers for quite some time now. So Sammy, let's get to it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Steelers crazy. Harris Smith shields. Blacko Polamalu takes it home. Super Bowl 43. Pittsburgh might be bound for that thanks to number 43. The sickest Pittsburgh Steelers podcast. Sports entertainment like no other. It's going to be sick. Yeah, last week we had on Kenny Pickett's quarterback coach, Tony Rassiopi. So in an effort to stack the most Italian names, I guess, in podcast history over here, Today, we're excited to bring in, as you mentioned, a longtime Steelers beat reporter in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at RayFit, that's F-I-T-T-1. He is none other than Ray Fittipaldo. Good afternoon, guys. How are you? Good, man. We're good, Ray. Thanks for jumping on with us. Uh, much appreciated. Obviously, we're going to dive right into some <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers talk. Let's yeah. start with what's relevant, right? You were at minicamp today, of course. I think one of the uh, larger subjects circulating were Alex Highsmith's comments about uh, his contract negotiations, where they stand. What can you tell us about that right now, Ray? Yeah, I mean, Alex Highsmith did an interview this morning, so he is at the mandatory minicamp. Um, what I could tell you is, you know, he said all along that, um, you know, he may be a hold in at some point if a contract doesn't get done. For those of you who don't know, basically a hold in is you show up, you're part of the team, you're in meetings, um, you're on the field with the team, but you're not practicing and putting your body in harm's way. So, um, you know, uh, mini camp, the first practice was today. They'll go Wednesday, they'll go Thursday. And then, of course, the next mandatory event is, is training camp at St. Vincent. So, um, you know, Alex said today that he's going to be there. Um, but uh, again, he does reserve the right to, uh, you know, do with TJ Watt and Cam Hayward and really a number of other guys have done in recent years. Yeah. All those guys, of course, remained Pittsburgh Steelers. I know Alex Highsmith desire to stay a Pittsburgh Steeler, but do you think that's reciprocated by the Steelers? Yeah. I mean, I think Omar Khan has been open that he wants Alex Highsmith to be a part of the team in the future because all these uh, contract negotiations are different, right? This is not going to be the same as Cam Hayward's. It's not going to be the same as TJ Watt or Micah Fitzpatrick's. Um, now there has been some hope that it could get done in June, like Micah Fitzpatrick's was last year, just because Omar Khan is the GM and Omar is the one who got that done before training camp. And I know Alex would love to have that. You know, no one wants to have a contract negotiation hanging over their heads, um, you know, in August, in July and August. That's not something that, um, you know, players look forward to. Uh, if you remember TJ, TJ uh, was a hold in all the way up until the Friday before the first game of the season two years ago, right? I mean, uh, you know, he, he was there. He kept himself in shape. But I don't think that was positive for either of the Steelers or for T.J. Watt, even though T.J. Watt went out and had an awesome game, his you know his first uh, his first uh, game that year. So you know we'll we'll see what transpires. Alex would like to get something done. I think Omar and the Steelers do, but you know the numbers got to mesh with the salary cap and all that stuff. And I, I think it's a pretty tough negotiation 
when you consider they're paying TJ Watt the money they're paying him, they're paying Minka, they're still paying Cam Hayward. There's only so much money that can go around. We're hanging out with Ray Fittipaldo, longtime Steelers writer for the Pittsburgh Post Gazette here on the Sick Podcast. Steelers, crazy. All right, Ray, there's been some scuttlebutt out there. Who, who the heck knows uh, where this started? Maybe it's because there was a cute video of Mike Tomlin and, and Chase Young uh, having some banter with each other uh, on the field a few years back during the COVID season in, in Pittsburgh, a game in which I think the, Steel- the Steelers lost that game, right? That ended their, uh, their, their win streak and undefeated yeah. season. Anyway, the scuttlebutt is surrounding the Steelers potentially. Uh, having interest, uh, I guess, would be the way to, to phrase it. Does this have any legs? Uh, do you know anything about this? Nothing that uh, I have heard from a credible source. I'm not sure where this the story came from either, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, it's not something that's being talked about at minicamp at all. Um, you know, the issue is, um, you know, we just mentioned T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith. I mean, Chase, uh, Chase Young is is an edge rusher. You know, he doesn't have the body type where he can bump inside and play as a five technique or, or a three technique with the Steelers. So, you know, the first issue is where do you play him? You're not going to play him or pay him to be a number three, not to mention that you just went out and, and got Marcus Golden a couple of weeks ago for that role. And number two, Chase Young's not going to come here and, uh, you know, make less money than Alex Highsmith. So, you know, I, I just don't think – um, that's going to work from a salary cap structure or really from a team structure right now. The Steelers are a draft and develop team. Um, they, they brought in Alex Heismith as a third round pick back in 2020. Um, the goal is to resign all those guys who perform for you. So I think that's where their focus is. And, uh, you know, I, I think the Chase Young thing is just, uh, you know, just a rumor at this point. I want to talk about a little bit about a guy that Jordan and I have chatted uh, a bunch about this offseason. That's Mark Robinson. Uh, I think he's ready to really burst onto the scene. Uh, it sounds like you had some conversations with Terrell Austin recently uh, about Mark Robinson. What were those like? Yeah, I mean, basically what Austin said today was um, they really liked what Mark Robinson did at the end of the 2022 season but they didn't feel like he was ready for a prime time role. And what that means is they didn't think he could be a starter in 2023. So they go out and sign Cole Holcomb. He's going to be their three down backer this year. And they went out and got a Landon Roberts, who's kind of that downhill thumper, you know, sort of in the mold of, uh, you know, Vince Williams and some other guys who have been here um, in the recent past. So, you know, I think that's where Mark Robinson fits. Uh, I think he's that two down downhill linebacker. And I thought it was interesting. You know, not a lot of people um, have talked about this before Austin did today, but Austin came out and said the hope is that he can challenge for a starting job in 2024. So, you know, uh, maybe Robinson gets on more special teams this year. Maybe he's the number three backer. Um, And who knows if there's injuries, he might have to start some games uh, in 2023. But I I think really what they're looking for is him to step up and uh, be a starter in 2024. And guys, it takes time. He was a running back in college, um, showed some flashes in training camp last year, but it's hard to make that transition when, uh, you know, you had the ball in your hands for so many years and now Mm -hmm. you're the guy trying to stop the guy, right? It's it's a whole different ball game. Reminds me of Miles Jack a little bit. Great running back in college uh, at UCLA. Steelers experimented with with him, of course. I guess if the running back depth continues to be thin, you move Mark Robinson on that that side of the ball or bring back Miles Jack. For that reason, go ahead, Jordan. Yeah, so I just wanted to get your take on how would you grade the Steelers offseason in terms of free agency? I like what they did. I mean, you know, you, you look at um, signing Isaac Sayamalu. You know, we all thought mm-hmm. the offensive line needed to be upgraded. They were not a good running team in the first half of the season. And uh, they were kind of middle of the road in pass protection all year. They were just – they were leaky on the left side of that line. And – um, Kevin Dotson was a big part of those issues. And, uh, you know, Dan Moore was a big part of those issues. And we all know, of course, that uh, left tackle was a, was addressed in the draft. But, you know, we already talked about Holcomb and Roberts. Um, you know, they re- retained some of their own, right? Larry Ogunjobi comes back. Um, you know, Patrick Peterson, I think, is, is, a, is a, a, an older vet who could be a mentor. Um, I think that's a good signing. Uh, Allen Robinson, I know they got him in a trade, but – 
you know, he's another new acquisition. So it's, it's a really, um, it's the biggest free agent class the Steelers have ever had. They have never signed as many outside free agents as they have in this year. I think that's a sign of what Omar Khan wants to do, um, what he thinks he needed to do in, in his first off season as GM. And listen, all these guys probably aren't going to pan out, but I'm pretty confident a lot of these guys like Sam Alu and some of the others will have a big impact on this football team. Definitely. You win games up front, so doing the right thing. Um, how would you grade their draft? Obviously, I think getting, you know, Joey Porter Jr. at 32 was like, you know, unbelievable. I mean, it, it was, I think in recent history, this, this, me personally, this has been one of the Steelers' better drafts. And it's, you know, Omar's, Omar's new era. So, yeah, I mean, definitely first, off to a good start. You got to go back to last November, right? With the, the Chase Claypool trade where they get that extra pick yeah. to get Joey Porter Jr. Because if they don't, who knows if the draft would have unfolded the way it did, you know? Yeah. There's no guarantee they would have traded up um, to get Broderick Jones. So that, that draft really was set up by that move that Omar made in November. I, I, I really like it. You know, I think getting Jones and then getting Joey Porter Jr. at number 32, I think almost every draft analyst had him as a first-round pick. So when you get that type of talent at the top of round two, um, that bodes well for your football team. And listen, guys, not a lot of other people are talking about him at this point, but being down there for the past month for OTAs and now minicamp, Keanu Benton really has a lot of potential. The people inside yeah. that building really think he's going to be an awesome football player. So, again, I don't know if he's going to start early, but we've all been talking about Broderick Jones. We've been talking about Joey Porter Jr. Keep an eye on Keanu Benton. I think that guy – is going to have a big impact in 2023 as well. Definitely. Wow. I mean, me and Mike were on, on a prior podcast where, you know, talking off air and that, that's what we said. I think people are forgetting, you know, some, I was even going to say Corey Trice Jr. There's been a lot of talk also around him. Um, so, you know, it's just exciting all around when you're getting guys in the seventh round that are able to come in and, you know, produce, you know, first year, uh, you know, possibly. So I, I think that it's just it's just great stuff. We had Nick Herbig on and Herbig was like one of the first things he said was like, I can't believe Keanu Benton got drafted where he got drafted. He was like, this dude is, is, is a top 20 player in the draft. And listen, he played with him obviously in college, but. Yeah. I mean, he, before he even talked about himself, he's like, Keanu Benton, Keanu Benton, Keanu Benton. So it says a lot. For yeah, I mean, it's in Wisconsin, boys. I don't know what's in the water over there. So, but yeah, hey. they got louder milk. They got, uh, well, Derek yeah. lost yeah. here, but TJ's still here. TJ. So uh, there's a pipeline there for sure. Good That's cheese curds. Nice. Yeah. So before I throw it back over to Mike, I, I kind of just wanted to, you know, because you've been at the practices, OTAs. Who who would you say personally? Who's Ray's potential breakout stealer for the twenty twenty three season? Well, you know, I don't think it necessarily has to do with how they're performing in OTAs. But if you look at what George Pickens did in the second half of the season, some of the big mm -hmm. plays that he made, you know, I'm thinking about the touchdown against the Raiders. You know, clutch stepping up there. I mean, that was cold weather. That's not a guy who played in a lot of cold weather in college and. He stepped up and made a big play for that football team. So, um, you know, 800 yards as a rookie, four touchdowns as a rookie. That's Those are good numbers for your first season. If they allow Kenny Pickett to open up a little bit, to throw a little bit more, I think George Pickens is poised for a big second season. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to have 1,500 yards, but I, I could see him going over 1,000 yards, maybe doubling his touchdown total to eight. I think he's going to be a much bigger part of this offense this year. So if there's one guy, you know, and when we talk about breakout players, I think we're always talking about offense too. So, you know, I, I think he's a, he's a guy who is, um, you know, can possibly take that next step and have a really, really good jump, good leap from year one to year two. Definitely. We just, we just set a record here on the sick podcast deal is crazy. I'm going to need the production team to, to mark this down. I'm going to mark this down too. It took us 13 minutes and 40 seconds to say the words Kenny Pickett. I think it's a Guinness World Record on an yeah. any Steelers <laughs> podcast, actually, in the, in the history of Steelers podcasts. That's true. Uh, but but let's transition to, to Kenny then. Uh, how has he looked, Ray? He's looked good. I mean, he looks like a guy who's in charge. Um, you know, you just watch him interact with Trubisky and Rudolph. 
Um, it's clear that he's he's no longer a rookie. I, I think what he did in the second half of the season did a ton for his confidence, right? I mean, yeah. stepping up in those games the way he did, um, they were in a playoff chase. Now, I know they didn't get the job done. You know, time kind of ran out, ran out for them on the clock, so to speak, and um, it, they were on the outside looking in. But I think that experience, and not only for Kenny, but for that entire offense and that entire football team, to be in that position to play in big football games in late December and January. I think that's going to bode well for them down the road. I, I think as you look ahead to 2023 guys, and I'm sure you guys talked about the schedule when it came out, but that schedule is brutal in the second half of the season. If they can get off to a good start, you know, if they could be five and three, six and two after eight games, and they can sort of just manage to, to hang in there in the second half of the season, I think they'll be right there for a wild card berth. You know, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you they can knock off the Bengals and uh, take over, you know, the the AFC North, but they're they're every bit as good, I think, as the Ravens. I, I think they're right there with some of those other teams that, that made the playoffs as wild cards last year. There is no reason that this football team can't be in the playoffs in 2023. Yeah, I have to travel out west to Seattle, uh, Week 17, which is never easy. Uh, and then you come back to play Baltimore week 18. So t- two key games, of course, as you mentioned, at the end of that regular season. Hey, I want to talk about a, a position group that I find to be the most intriguing uh, on this Steelers team before I send it back over uh, to Jordan for some final thoughts. And that's the tight end group, Ray. Uh, we obviously didn't talk about Darnell Washington, but that's a guy who has uh, received almost as much attention as <laughs> Kenny Pickett this offseason somehow. Uh, and Broderick Jones, a big tight end out of Georgia. Connor Hayward's still there. Zach Gentry, of course, Pat Fryermuth. Yeah. I think we can all anticipate the Steelers keeping four tight ends, right? And how do you see Washington and Hayward maybe still fitting in to that group? Yeah, and I, I don't even think it's a big deal that you keep four because, honestly, Connor Hayward – can just transition and be be Derek Watt when they want him to be Derek Watt. So he'll sort of just take on that fullback role when needed. Um, Connor can play, play special teams too, but I really like him. But when, when we're talking about the tight ends, and I know we've, you know, for whatever reason you said Washington has been a big storyline. He's going to be a good player. But let's not forget about Pat Fryermuth. I mean, that guy was money as a rookie when he had Ben Roethlisberger throwing the ball to him. We all know they kind of cut back and went more conservative last year with the rookie. His touchdown production went from seven to two, um, and he wasn't as good in the red zone. I, I think he's another guy. You know, he wouldn't be a breakout player, but I could see him getting back up to seven, eight touchdowns, especially if they improve in the red zone. So to me, I'm looking forward to Pat Fryermuth and what he can do. Um, you know, last year was probably just a one off for him and for Deontay Johnson, right? I mean, difficult circumstance with a rookie quarterback and neither of those guys performed the way they wanted to perform, um, you know, from a touchdown production perspective. But I, I think Pat Fryermuth is a top 10 tight end in the NFL. And I think he's going to bounce back and have a really, really good season for the Steelers. I feel the same way. I just think that we're stacked. And I think that we know on the defensive side of the ball, how important depth is. And uh, I think the Steelers, I think that that's what they won in the offseason and in the draft is just depth because you got guys that are just going to – I think I read an article today that they brought in, you know, another long snapper kind of to, you know, push Kristen Coons, not in a, you know, like, hey, I'm going to do – but, like, you know, in a competitive way, like that you want to bring out the best in these guys. And I just think that, you know, this is just so, – it's weird because, like, you know, me and Mike were talking about it, like life after Ben Roethlisberger, like this is all – and then having Kenny Pickett just go from Pitt to – it all seems like a dream in, in, in Steeler land right now, but you know, it, I think it's all good things. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about the depth. I mean, look what the, they did on the D line, right? You know, they lost some guys. Unfortunately, Chris Wormley got injured. Um, yeah. He's still rehabbing that injury. So they had to, had to go out and get Braden Fehoko, Armin Watts. Um, you know, Adams was a starter last year, but you know, we just talked about Keanu Benton. So that's one position group that was really fortified. Um, in free agency and in the draft. And they did that everywhere. You know, look at safety, Keanu Neal they brought in with with DeMonte KZ to sort of combine to fill that uh, Terrell Edmonds role. Um, So I agree with you. I I think they did a lot um, to to, uh, improve their depth. 
Um, they didn't need it last year at certain positions. You look at what they did on the O-line. All those guys were healthy, but that doesn't happen every year. You need guys like uh, Nate Herbig, um, a guy who started games for the Eagles and for the Jets. You need guys um, – you know, like LaRaven Clark, um, you know, another guy they brought in. We'll see what his role is. You know, he might not have a role if Dan Moore's the swing tackle. But, you know, guys like that, veterans who have been there and done that, those are the types of free agents that uh, Omar Khan and Andy Weidel went out and got this offseason. Quarterback depth, too. Who yeah. saw that coming, you know, to a degree? Yeah, Mason absolutely. obviously staying, so there's another position. Yeah. Definitely. So before we get you out of here, Ray, again, I just want to say that we appreciate your time and uh, just tell the people where they can check you out at. And when you're not, you know, covering the Steelers sports post Gazette stuff, what do you like to do? Like, what's a hobby fish? We always like to ask, you know, our guest on here because it's always like, you know, we talk Steelers, but you know, our viewers want to know, you know, I'm sure they follow your work as well. Just, you know, what is, what does Ray do on his off days? If you have any off days. Yeah, I don't have a lot of off days during the season, I'll tell you that. But uh, there's going to be some downtime after mini camp. Going to take some time off. Uh, my daughter does track and cross country, so I'm at a lot of cross country meets. She plays basketball. My son's really into baseball. So whenever I'm not working, I'm with my kids and uh, watching them play sports that they love. It's awesome. Well, we really appreciate it. Uh, you coming on, we'll have to do it again and, and keep up the great coverage. And tell tell uh, everyone where they can follow you as well. Yeah, uh, www.postgazette.com. Also, my t- Twitter handle, RayFit, two Ts, one. So there you go. Awesome. Well, hey, this Good has stuff. been fun. Stuff. We'll definitely do it again. Appreciate your time, Ray. All right, sports guys, dad. He's got, he's got the sports van going on right now, the yeah. minivan. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. All right, guys. See you. Thank you. Yeah, again, just uh, and, and that's what's crazy is because like people aren't talk. Everyone, you know, talks Kenny Pickett, you know, Joey Porter Jr. There's other guys on this Steelers roster on this Steelers team that that are just dogs. I find the tight end group so intriguing. I really do. Uh, and then, you know, he made a really good point about the defensive line. We love our guy, Chris Wormley, over here, but it was a tough, tough break for both him and the Steelers, who I think might have looked to resign him as he was just obviously a really steady contributor uh, for that team. But you bring in Keanu Benton, you know, you get a guy like Fahoko, and, you know, you, re- you revamp and reload. That's what this Pittsburgh team has always done. That's why Mike Tomlin has never been below 500. They're always competitive, always have a chance. Uh, no rebuilding, just revamping uh, in, in Pittsburgh Steelers land. So uh, you're absolutely right. And before we sign off, I want to talk about two Pittsburgh sports moments of the week. What do you think? Do you maybe make this a new segment at the end, Jordan? I mean, we could. I think that Andrew McCutcheon hitting Andrew McCutcheon hitting two thousand was amazing. I literally got out of I was I was over at my mom swimming with my daughter, and I got out of my pool and I catch this up. And I'm like, if I get out of, I was like, I got to get out of the pool. I got to get out of the pool. And there, Perfect. Andrew McCutcheon, two K. One each. That's you nailed it because you nailed one of uh, Pittsburgh sports. Moments. Yeah, and I know the other one is. I'm I'm thinking that it's a moment. I just want to uh, rest in peace to the Godfather of Pittsburgh sports, uh, Stan Sabern. So, uh, well, I was uh, I was gonna, of course, in- include that. So first of all, we'll we'll start with that. Yeah, of course, Stan was the man. There- uh, loved the show. I worked with him over at, at Root Sports formerly, and now it's AT and T Sports. And I was an intern at the time, and he was still the nicest guy. You know, I wasn't like a going to grab coffee for him. He was genuinely interested in talking to me, which uh, says more than anybody else ever to come on this podcast. So, uh, you know, shout out Stan for sure. Now, the other moment that I was going to talk about, which pales in comparison to a degree to to Stan, of course, was that I'm not sure if everybody saw it, but our friend Brian McFadden over at the All Things Covered podcast, had Troy yes. Polamalu on. Make sure you check that out. As McFadden wrote a letter that Troy addressed to Bryant back when they were playing together when BMAC was going through some tough times and some struggles, this letter was inspiring. It was deep, and Bryant broke down literally uh, on his podcast on air with Patrick Peterson and cried and poured his heart out to Troy Polamalu. So, I, you know, it made me think and tweet that Pittsburgh is so lucky to have two of just the nicest – guys of all time at least on their football roster uh when we grew up and troy paul Mullen and heath miller i'm sure there are many more yeah. but it's also a good uh lead into the fact that stan Savard maybe just the nicest guy of all time too so uh you know city full of role models and good people obviously uh 
is something you cannot put a price on. Most definitely. And, uh, you know, hey, and, and I will say this, Andrew McCutcheon, he, he got his 2K, but the Pittsburgh Pirates are in first place right now. Doesn't I'm matter how you cuts. doesn't doesn't matter how you feel about it. And the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, I know Ray said that he. I, I think that they can hang with the Bengals. I think we showed that even you know last year, despite you know what the ups and downs that we went through. Um, so I, I I still think that the Steelers control their own destiny, obviously. And uh, the AFC North, I, we're still the kings, man. They're everybody's the Steelers are tied for first place in the AFC North too. How about that? There we go. Undefeated. Come on. First in the Come on. Pay one. The, first, the river hounds are, are first, killing it. Pittsburgh. Are Pittsburgh. How are the Maulers doing? I don't know. What's that? The Maulers. The Maulers. Not, yeah. They're not doing too hot. Okay. So, well, but you know, you, you root for every uh, Pittsburgh team, but you know, Let's root for Ray's kids. Sound like some some ballers over there. So there's there's more Pittsburgh. There it's funny because he went from working in Pittsburgh sports and he's like, you know what? After that, I I do more sports. It's kind of like my life to yeah. a degree too, but it doesn't get old. Yeah, it ain't a bad life. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you again, Ray, for coming on. I'm Jay York Football. This is Miked Up Sports One, and this has been another edition of the Sick Podcast, Steeler Crazy. Make sure you subscribe. Sick team, hit it. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Steelers Crazy on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.